In this last video of Unit 2, we're looking at uh, Part 2, Lesson Number 3, in which we are going to fit an equation to existing data. And we're going to need to use our TI calculators to do this. In this video, I'm going to be using a TI Inspire. The reason for that is because I have these calculators available in the classroom, and each of you have access to this software on your computer. It can be downloaded from the Software Center. Um, I'm not sure if you have to be on campus to download it or not, but um, the Software Center is installed in your Start menu. We talked a little bit how to do this in class, so see me if you need any help getting that installed. Well, here we've got some data that's been recorded, and we're going to need to work with an equation that fits this data. Essentially, um, we're told how much each of these candy bars weigh in grams, and we also are told how many calories are found in each of these different candy bars. The instructions say to draw a scatter diagram of the data using weight as the independent variable. And a lot of times our independent variable will be noted with the x coordinate. So let me show you how we can do that with our calculator. I think if this question shows up in Math Excel, you're going to be uh, faced with a multiple choice question anyway, and you're not actually drawing this on paper. You'll be choosing the correct answer from an option of three or four. Um, so what we need to do is recreate this table into our calculator, and we can do that pretty easily. When we press the on button on our calculator or if we start the software on our computer, I always recommend pressing the on button until you get to this screen and then we'll select a new document. If we're prompted to save the last user's work, I almost always tell you to say no. Rather than starting with a calculator or graph, what we're going to do first is start with option number four, the list and spreadsheet option. This will allow us to enter data into a table so that we can then work with it on another screen. Now, Before we start entering any numbers, it's a good idea to apply some sort of description. Now, We could be quite basic here and call this the X column and the Y column. We sort of have that given to us already. Weight is X and calories are Y. Uh, but you could also um, spell this out here. We can say that uh, we have weight in the first column and we have calories in the second column. And providing some name in this uh, title row is going to be helpful in the next steps. So I do recommend uh, something here. Um, even if it is as simple as X and Y um, or some abbreviation for these names, I would recommend placing them there. If you're using the computer, you can actually type this with the computer's keyboard. If you're using a handheld, you can do what I've done on the screen and actually use the keyboard at the bottom of the calculator. Well, now uh, the one tedious part about this process, we've got to copy these numbers and uh, get them into the calculator. And you can't actually copy and paste here, so you are going to have to type them on your own. Um, so if you've got the uh, worksheet in front of you, now would be the time to look at the worksheet side by side with the calculator and start typing in entries. 44.28 for the first one, 44.84 for the second, and so on. Go ahead and pause. I'll pause the video and uh, complete this off screen. Okay, so I've entered the data in both the weight and calories column. And it's really important when you get to that last entry here to do two things. Number one, press the Enter key at the very bottom here. If your cursor remains active in this cell, then the calculator won't accept the update. You have to press Enter or at least click a different cell to get out of it in order for that number to be accepted. If it's not stored into the calculator, it's going to affect our next step. The second thing you've got to do is just double check to make sure that your columns are the same size. If there are more entries in one column than the other, then again our next step won't work properly. Now for the second step, we need to analyze what's going on in this table here, and sometimes we can do that with the menu button, but in this case, um, the analyzation is going to come from a different page of the document. 
So this page is a list and spreadsheets page. If we press Control Document to add a new page, this time we're going to add a data and statistics page. And again, you can click on this with your mouse or you can press the number five on the keyboard to make that selection. So here's the data all scattered out on the screen and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because there's no organization here. In fact, your screen will probably look different than mine. But the way we fix that and put us all on the same page is we provide the variables on the X and the Y axis of our graph. So if you have a handheld calculator, you've got to slide your finger on the directional pad to wake up the mouse, and then you can move your cursor down here to select this option. Or, of course, if you're on the computer right now, you can just use your mouse on the keyboard. But we're going to click on uh, this location down here, and we're going to add a variable. Now, a moment ago, I was using the letters X and Y, but I never did save that information. So I'm not going to use X or Y across the X axis. Instead, I'm going to use the column as it was named, calories and weight. We did say that the weight of the candy bar is going to be placed on the X axis. So I'm going to choose that option right now, and you'll see the points move. So now we've sort of aligned our candy bars along the x-axis by weight, but we still don't know the calorie content and how they um, uh, correlate to weight just yet because we haven't added that variable. So we're going to move our cursor up to the top left-hand side of the graph, and this time we're, we'll, we will select calories for the y variable. And again, the data points now shift a little bit more, and we have a scatter plot to reference. If this is a math Excel question, you'll choose the uh, appropriate graph that seems to match this the most. Pay close attention to your X scale and your Y scale while making your selection. This software does have the ability to take a screenshot of this calculator, so I've just slid it down here now so that you can see what I'm pointing to. Uh, this little key here, or this button here, will allow us to capture a page where we can use the keyboard shortcut Control J. And what that does is it takes a screenshot of uh, what would be the calculator screen and it copies it to the clipboard. And if I jump over to my notes page, especially if you have electronic notes to work with, you can now paste it onto the screen like I've done here. And that was the wrong image. That was from my test earlier. Let me paste that again. There we go. So there's that, um, that picture of what we were just looking at. I'm going to resize it just a little bit better. OK, so we have a scatter plot now. And this does represent our data points. Uh, question B asks us, uh, what type of relation appears to exist between the weight of the candy bar and the number of calories? And when we're talking about the type of relation, what they're asking is, what type of line um, or curve would fit this data? And some of you might be thinking, well, a pretty extravagant curve would be necessary in order to strike this data. And that's true. We might be able to find a pretty wild curve, some sort of polynomial that hits this, these data points. That would be pretty challenging. But I think in this particular case, especially coming off of the last part of the lesson that we saw a few moments or in, in the uh, prior video, I think what we're after here is a discussion of a linear model. Even though this linear model does not strike all of the points, um, it does a fairly good job of approximating or finding the middle of most of those points. So I'm going to make the argument that uh, the relation here is a linear relationship. And if you're willing to accept that, then we can move forward with the next step. And we can actually find the equation of this line to approximate um, other candy bars' calories based on their weight. So uh, part C says to select two points and find a linear model that contains those points. In this drawing here, the point in this corner and this corner um, seem to be the closest to the line that I've drawn. So let's go ahead and identify what those coordinates are and we'll find the equation through them. On the calculator, 
Um, we'll hover over this point. Again, I woke up the mouse by sliding my finger across the directional pad, or if you're on your computer, you can just hover over it this way. We've got 39.52 comma 210. 39.52, that appears to be the Heath bar down here at the bottom. And for our other coordinate up here is the one we selected, that's 61.12 comma 280. And that happens to be this candy bar here, the Snickers bar. So our two coordinates are 39.52, 210, and 61.12, 280. With these two points, we can now establish a linear equation through them. First thing we need is our slope. And slope is defined as the change in y over the change in x. And we can calculate our change in y by simply subtracting our two y coordinates. Order doesn't matter as long as you are consistent with your order from uh, the y components and the x components. So in this case, I started with 210 and subtracted 280. Uh, when I subtract the x components, I need to subtract 39.52 minus 61.12 in that order. And that slope comes out to be 3.24. Now it's worth noting that um, in the numerator the 210 and 280 represented the calories associated with the candy bars and the 39 and 61 represented the weight in grams. So if we're thinking about the unit me of measure for this slope, our unit of measure is going to be calories per Ram. It's simply a combination of these two units. And essentially what we're saying here is that for every gram of weight increase, so this is technically 324 over 1, for every gram of increase, one gram of increase in weight, then the calorie increase is 3.24. Or the average of these candy bars is 3.2 calories per gram. Well, the slope is the first part to the equation. We also need the um, y-intercept. And we can obtain that fairly easily by using our slope-intercept formula. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. We don't actually know what the y-intercept is, but we do have two coordinates to choose from. We only need one of them in the point-slope formula. So I'm going to use the first one, the y-value in the first coordinate is 210. The slope we just calculated was 3.24 and the x-coordinate from the first candy bar was 39.52. By simplifying this equation we should have our slope-intercept equation. And our resulting equation down here is in slope-intercept form. Now if we were to use function notation we might write something like this. Uh, the calories dependent upon the weight of the candy bar is equal to 3.24 W plus 81.9552. Essentially the two equations mean the same thing but with function notation we would choose letters appropriately to act as an abbreviation. So the question in part D now asks us to graph the line that we just established on the scatter plot on our calculator. And so if we jump back to the calculator, that's easy to plot this line here. I'll show you how. We'll press the menu button first, choose option 4 to analyze the graph, and then choose option 4 again to plot the function. So we went from 4 to 4 to plot the function, and now we're being asked to enter the function. You'll notice that this equation is written in terms of f and x. So let's make sure that we use x as our variable. And we want 3.24x plus 81.9552. Okay. 
And so there's that linear equation, and you can see that that line does strike those two data points that we selected at the beginning, and it, it strikes them perfectly. So for my notes, I'm going to capture this page again. Actually, I'm going to move this cursor out of the way and then capture that page. And now I can paste it into my electronic document over here. Okay. And now we can use part E, the, or complete part E, use the linear model to predict the number of calories in a candy bar that weighs 62.3 grams. Well, again, the calories based on the weight, 62.3, if our linear model is um, a good fit, which it appears, we haven't done any analysis to really verify how close of a fit this is, but visually it looks pretty decent. So we'll take 62.3, uh, e uh, I'm sorry, the calories based on the weight of 62.3 is equal to 3.24 times 62.3 plus 81.9552. And using my calculator off screen, I've got a total of 283.8072. So it would appear that if a candy bar weighs 62.3 grams, it will have approximately 283.8 calories in that candy bar. And as we mentioned before, the slope of the line that was found in part C here, okay, the slope that we identified, 3.24, this is going to help us answer part F, is simply the measurement of calories per gram. How many calories are found in the candy bar for each gram of weight? With this next example, I'd like to illustrate how the calculator can find a line of best fit in case you need to do that in one of our math Excel assignments. So I'm going to go back to the calculator. And again, I'm going to press the on button and select new document. Uh, and I'm going to say no, I don't want to save any of that work. Unless there's a need for you to save that document, I would normally say no to that, that prompt. And now I'm going to add a list in spreadsheets page again like we did before, and this time I'm going to enter the data from this table. Uh, please pause the video now and do this on your own. Okay, and I've now reached the end of the list. Again, I'm checking for two things. Number one, pressing enter after that last value so that it gets accepted into the calculator. And number two, I'm double checking to make sure that the size of each column is the same. I did label the columns with price and demand as indicated in the chart over here. And now I'm going to analyze the graph and we're going to create a data and statistics page to do that. Now I'll just note here, I'm not really following these questions on the right hand side. I'm just illustrating a particular process for this example. So back on the calculator, we have our data stored in the list and spreadsheets page. Now if we press control document, that will create a new page in this document. This time we want a data and statistics page. We'll place the, let's double check this here, price is our independent variable and demand is our dependent variable. So we'll place price along the x-axis. We'll place demand along our y-axis. And now we've got a, new, a nice scatter plot of our data. Here again, this um, uh, the relationship here appears to be linear. I think a straight line would go through the middle of this group pretty well. Uh, if we were really worried about it, we might be able to find some sort of curve that fits most of this data as well. But I'm going to settle on linear, a linear equation at this point. All right, so to fit an equation to this data without doing the work by hand, if we jump into our menu option and choose option four to analyze the graph, this time, instead of plotting the function, we're actually going to ask the calculator to compute a regression for us. That's option number six. And there are lots of different regressions that could possibly fit that the calculator is prepared to complete for us. The one that we want is either one or two. They both represent linear equations, but since we're uh, more accustomed to the slope-intercept form, mx plus b, I'll go ahead and select that option number one. And now the calculator has gone through its methods to find the line that fits this data the best, quote, the best. 
and this is the, the equation that goes with it. And part of the troubles that we have with this equation is sometimes because of all the extra decimals it doesn't fit on our screen and we do have to relocate it. There are other ways to show fewer decimals that I'll, I'll share with you in class if we need it. Uh, but ultimately here we've got a nice linear equation that seems to go through most of this data. And when rounded the equation looks something like this. If we were to use our function notation it might look something like this. The price whoops, sorry, the demand based on price is equal to negative 1.34p plus 86.20. Now remember, the units for our slope were the change in y values, or in this case, uh, the letter d, uh, divided by the change in uh, x values, or in this case, p, and so the demand was the number of genes, and the uh, price, of course, was dollars. So when we're talking about the slope here, negative 1.34,